Hello, I'm Atsuba George and I'm so excited and really, really blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, God is changing things about you. He is doing that purposely because He wants to make you great and make you a blessing. So I pray today that as we go into God's word, your eyes will be open. Your understanding will be clear and God will find you worthy to be a tool for his word to be fulfilled on earth. But before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The word of God is sweet. Too sweet. Praise God. Too sweet. Now then, we've been talking about the covenants that God made with Abraham. And David said in 1 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 16, that you should be mindful of his covenants. Thank you, Lord Jesus. First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 15. It says, be mindful always of his covenants. Which covenant is he talking about? The covenant which he made with Abraham. Two of them. Covenant of sustenance. And the covenant of circumcision. Now the covenant of sustenance was, is, is made manifest by Titan. And then the covenant of establishment. So sustenance and establishment actually. So the covenant of establishment is by the circumcision. Now, you see, sometimes when you study scriptures, it's so important that you have an understanding. And sometimes people have made this mistake of, um, you know, sometimes when you read the teachings of Paul, you, you will see Paul start saying things like, circumcision doesn't mean anything. Now, hmm. there are things you want to touch and <laughs> it will take those who, whose mind have aligned to truth to realize that what you're saying is the truth. Some people get emotional when you touch people they respect. See that now? Now we revere Apostle Paul. We we you know say so he wrote half of the New Testament, more than half of the New Testament. Yeah, but it doesn't mean everything he said was right. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, I'm telling you the truth. It doesn't mean everything he said was right. Now sometimes it's important you understand where one is coming from. You need to understand where one is coming from. And, and, and it happens even today. Now, because people are abusing something and you're trying to correct that abuse, in your bid to say something to um, awaken the minds of people, you may go overboard. Now, the issue about circumcision is this. God spoke to them. Now, we read this last week. Let me, let's go back there again. Um, Genesis chapter 17. Now, it's important you, you know, I've told you this before that the, the Bible is not the word of God. That's what, yeah, what I said. Yeah, listen. Please listen. Don't be put off. You've been enjoying the message. So just keep calm and listen. The Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God 
what they did with it and how they ended with it. I'll take that again. The Bible is a compendium of people who received the word of God, what they did with it and how they ended with it. Now that's what the Bible is. So having this mentality that everything written in the Bible is the word of God, it's wrong. Now that's why how many people have gone astray. So they read a phrase and say the word of God says. Huh? Who said it? You see what I'm getting to now? Who said it? Is it God that said it? Is it a man that said it? So somebody is lamenting in scripture and someone quotes that lamentation and calls it the word of God. Moses was lamenting and says, how old, how long will man stay? And then that's when he quoted 70 years. And someone said, the word of God say, we will live for 70 years. No! The one actually that God said in, 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 in Genesis, he said 120 years. That's what God said. And even that, even when God speaks, you must understand when he says something as truth or when he says something as judgment. Now, if he said it as judgment, already you know that it can change. It's not final. But the things God says as truth, you know that is established. You can't go against it. Now, these are the things we need to understand as children of God. We must understand our Father. And so when someone speaks on his behalf, we should be able to tell, that's not my Father's purpose. That's not my Father's will. That's not the mind of my Father. I know my dad trusts you. I know you, you, you work for my dad, but that's, that's not my Father's mind. Now, what he just said, that's not my Father's mind. This is so important as Christians. Because cause the Bible says, be, be, be where less, you know, it's babies that are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. They come, oh, it's important. So they say, okay. Someone now comes and say, it's not important. Yes, yes, yes. Someone say, oh, women are not supposed to wear, women are not supposed to wear. Hey, eh, we said it. We said it. We said it. Mm -hmm. All those sisters. Then tomorrow someone comes again and says, listen, I found out from the word of God that is, there's nothing wrong with women. Yes, yes. What is wrong with you? All of them quoted from the Bible. Now you're confused. Why are you confused? You're confused because you don't know the mind of God. You've been following the mind of men. So when men make mistakes, you join them. That's exactly what Paul said. Paul himself said it. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy or vain deceit. After the... Oh, my God. Sorry. So even... Now, now, Paul, because Paul said it, you are not careful to judge the same words with... You know, judge him by the same words. So you just say, everything Paul said is true. No, sir. Paul made his own mistakes. And, and how you know that God is involved in something is the fruit that thing will produce. Yeah. So, when you get to a place as a minister of God, that you don't see the hand of God defending your message, now you get into a problem with the message that you preach. And then from all the indication, God did not come to bail you out. Then you need to check that message if God really gave it to you. So two things you'll see, the testimony of the message, they are the proof that God is in it. And number two, when challenges come, he will back you up because of the message. So here's Apostle Paul. He goes to Jerusalem and they came to him and said, Brother Paul, um, there's this news going around now that you are here. 
so people don't misunderstand you. So that's to tell you that the elders understood him. Separate from the perception that his message teaches. Are you getting what I'm saying? The elders understood him. They didn't have a problem with him. But then there is a projection that his message was giving that was a problem. So they said to him, they said, look, Brother Paul, um, you know, a lot of people here think you're teaching against the law of Moses and stuff. So please, just to keep everybody calm, this is what we advise. Do this and you'll be fine. <clears throat> and Paul went into the temple with those guys. And right there in the temple, when people saw him, there was an uproar. And then the soldiers came and take, took him away. And Paul never, from that day, never had any opportunity to speak to the Jews freely. Meanwhile, he was told these things will happen. Now, whether he didn't take it seriously, I think he didn't take it seriously, especially when Prophet Agabus met him. Now, because Paul was a prophet of God, I don't know why I'm sharing these things with you, but I believe someone should learn this. When a prophet is set about his own ways, God, now before God speaks to you through another prophet, he must have been talking to you and you're not listening. If, if you're a minister of God, most times the Spirit of God will talk to you. But when you're not listening and you're about to make a mistake, he will raise another prophet to speak to you. And now the challenge is this. This prophet will not speak to you in clear terms. Especially when you're not alone in that place. You see, because the Spirit of God respects the office that we occupy. So, now, if, if a prophet comes to you personally, he can speak to you plainly. This thing you're about to do, I don't think the hand of the Lord is upon it. No, 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 brother, don't say that. Oh, oh really, if you're saying this, then I better take it seriously. Whatever way. But then, if that prophet doesn't have, doesn't know you personally, or doesn't have the opportunity to speak with you personally, or sometimes, God will just bring the word like that in parables. So Paul met prophet Agabus. You know, he, 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 the, 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 it didn't seem like there was a, a previous relationship before then. So he came to visit in town. Paul was in town. And prophet Agabus took Paul's robe, Paul's ghetto, tied his hands and legs. And he said, this is what the Lord is saying. This is how the Jews in Jerusalem will bound the hands and feet of the owner of this ghetto and hand him over to the Gentiles. Now Paul was there listening. Now he didn't take those words seriously. Now because the other brethren who Paul felt he was more senior to have been telling him, Brother Paul, this Jerusalem you're going to, we have a bad feeling about it. He refused to listen. He shut them up. In fact, he got to a point, he told them, look, you guys, why are you saying this? You're breaking my heart. He said, I'm not only will waiting to be honest, I'm willing to die for the name of Jesus in Jerusalem. Was God sending him to go and die? No. God never sent Paul to Jerusalem. God specifically told him not to go to Jerusalem. Read your Bible. So that trip to Joseph, number one, was in disobedience to God. Now you see? So Paul, no matter how anointed he was, lived many years of disobedience to God. Why do I say many years? I'll explain to you. So he got to Jerusalem by himself, by his own will. He got there and he met the Jews in Jerusalem, the elders of the church. 
Now remember what Agabus said, the Jews in Jerusalem will bind your hands and feet. Now probably Paul was waiting for somebody to bring rope and chains and stuff, but nobody did. But he got in there and the elders who were Jewish people said to him, Brother Paul, this is what we advise. And sheepishly, he said, well, for peace sake, you know what, let's do it. I'll join them today. He didn't realize that that was when his hands were. So, for example, when someone says, my hands are tied, it doesn't mean literally you use rope to tie the person. It just means that there are prevailing circumstances that will not allow me to do what I know is right to do. So, so they tied his hands. So those Jews, elders of the church, praise God, bound him without him realizing it. And he followed sheepishly. And it was right in that temple where they sent him to. A revolt started. The Romans, the Gentiles came and took him away. And he stayed in the hands of the Gentiles from that day. So all the many years he lived in prison. Most of the letters he wrote to us, he wrote them from prison. Do you know what that means? He wrote them from the place of disobedience. All the years he spent in prison, there was, have you ever thought about this? There was not one supernatural intervention, unlike before. Two things. And this is where we really, really have to be careful. It will make you check his message. Why didn't the Lord defend him? Two things. The message and the action. Now the action to go to Jerusalem was wrong. Number two, you remember when Paul came, you know, when Peter and John had to, they went to visit the Paul over where Paul was preaching. And they saw when they heard that the Gentiles have received the gospel, they were getting filled with the Holy Ghost and all that. And Peter went to visit. Now, when they went back to Jerusalem, they had this meeting and Peter spoke up and said, this is our testimony. This is, God is really moving amongst the Gentiles. Now, the Gentiles were uncircumcised people. Now, does God expect the, every uncircumcised person to become circumcised, to be partaker of the Abrahamic blessing? No. But now listen. To preach that circumcision means nothing is wrong. To the Jews, you can't tell them because it's now a tradition for them. Why is it a tradition for them? They are following the command of the Lord. I'm telling you the covenant God had with Abraham. So they are following the command of the Lord. Now, when you now preach to the Jews and say circumcision does not mean anything, you are not just insulting him. You are, he feels you are trying to take him out of God's covenant because God specifically said in Genesis chapter 17 that this must continue throughout all their generations. And we are now in the Christ generation. So circumcision is as important to the Jews. Now, th there are some of us, you know, some parts of the world who have opened up to circumcision. Now, most places that um, Christianity has gained influence, you see that circumcision of their children is it's paramount. So now you see that helicomosopredia. That covenant, even though 
the truth of that covenant is Christ. Now, that's what Paul was trying to preach. That it is now the circumcision of the heart. But it doesn't negate the, circum the actual circumcision of the flesh. Telling that to a Jew, you're causing trouble for yourself. And not only for yourself, like even God will not stand with you when that is challenged. Now that's why God couldn't stand with Paul. His message got him into trouble. And God could not defend him. Now what I'm saying might be tough for some people. Like what are you trying to say? The great apostle Paul. Yeah. But God's word is greater. Follow what God has said. Why? Because... I told you, tithing represents the covenant of sustenance. Circumcision represents the covenant of um, uh, uh, territorial protection. So circumcision means you'll be given a territory. And also that territory will be protected. I want you to follow me carefully. You know my time is up. <laughs> it's God. Oh, glory, glory, glory. I've got to continue from here tomorrow. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye.